Uh, groups working closely together with uh, a large group of research organizations, that's actually why the official logo is Wageningen University and Research Center, uh, to link science with uh, practice. Um, I will, I'm very pleased also that um, originally actually uh, our rector Magnificus Martin Kropf um, agreed to give the welcome word uh, to you, to wish you welcome to this conference. Unfortunately, he had to cancel in the very last minute, but we have a very good replacement in the person of Pim Braskamp, the Dean of uh, Education of Wageningen University, and he will now uh, speak to you to officially uh, welcome you to this uh, conference. Pim, the floor is yours. Well, welcome everybody. It's of course an honor to stand here instead of our rector, but he had a very important job. He needed to be in Amsterdam to, to sign an agreement which is a huge research project with uh, many partners from industry and uh, research and the government working together in uh, a thing which is bothering already for, uh, I think, since 1984 officially, but a lot longer before that, which is phosphate. And I tried to sell to one of your organizers that phosphate is typically an equal system service, but uh, he didn't agree. And, uh, and he told me that if I would stay during the whole conference, that at the end I would understand what it is all about. Uh, but certainly not phosphate. Although I would think that ecosystem and phosphate are married. Well, anyway, the, uh, the subtitle of the conference is Integrating Science and Practice. And that is very much, as Dolph already said, uh, associated with our university. Uh, our university and research center has the, the, the remit to do research which has, as my rector calls it, impact. Which has something to do with reality on, on the medium and short term. We, we are doing fundamental research, but not just for curiosity's sake, it seems. We are doing research because we feel that it has relevance for society. And that's why the type of things you are reading here are on our agenda. And the way we are doing that, and uh, that is that originally this was a university, but far more originally it was a college of agriculture, which was purely practical, and in the course of time, it became a university. And, and later on, it was merged with research institutes, which are fairly applied, while the university is from strategic to fundamental. And, and that's the way we are trying to do this. This marriage of these different institutions makes that we can approach uh, research questions in a very a variety of ways, which means that uh, it's scientifically sound, sound, but has a high societal relevance. <coughs> we are in the, the, the nice thing of, uh, of hit lists is that is a proper definition of lists, isn't it? So we are in the top five of our domain and we are the number second in the world of agricultural universities. So, uh, so once in a while we are an agricultural university, but any other time we are in other lists. It just depends where, of course, you would like to, to end up. But anyway, uh, the, uh, we are proud of ourselves and feel that Wageningen University Research Center is a relevant partner in the world. The, uh, in education, it's the same thing. Uh, we, we do have uh, academic uh, bachelors and masters, and of course a PhD program, PhD programs, but we also have professional bachelor, as we call it, and professional masters. That, that's something which, which does not exist, I think, in Britain, for instance, or in the United States. It's typically a continental invention to have Hochschule, as it is called in German, I think, and uh, Universität, which is a difference. And the one is focused on professional education and the other one on university education. And what I told you about uh, agricultural college changing into a university is, is most nicely illustrated by the number of theses which is produced in this institution uh, annually, which, uh, well, which, which is not quite an E-curve, but in the beginning it looked like it, but it doesn't explode as it should have been perhaps. But on the other hand, uh, 
the number now is quite appropriate, it seems to me. But what you see is that, uh, and that's, that's quite common, I think, and also in uh, other uh, parts of the world, and in the Netherlands certainly, that in particular, uh, let's say in the 70s and 80s, the PSD output started to increase, and as you see, it's now on the level of uh, some 200 nearly, annually. This is our motto, to explore the potential of nature to improve the quality of life. And uh, the way we have defined that in our strategic plan is that we, we are approaching our domain from three different angles. And food and food production is the traditional angle we took, but the one which is more related to the topic you are here for today is the living environment with a, a, a number of themes and fairly recently we, we broadened our scope to health, life, lifestyle and livelihood uh, taking uh, more a people type of approach instead of the technological or nature type of approach and similarly at the same time the uh, uh, I presume, I think that we mostly are a biological faculty, a biological uh, set of research institutes, uh, but the um, uh, social sciences bit is also very important and the way we approach this is that these two approaches to problems should be integrated and in particular I think that in the program you are discussing here, uh, society, and biology are very much integrated as a way to look into ecosystems services. We have a, a strong international tradition. The, uh, the, the current, well, the, 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 the town in, in the world with most nationalities is New York. I happen to ask that to students always, but I don't dare to ask you. But I might ask you which town is number two. That's the wrong answer, Wageningen is number three. Number, number, <laughs> number two is Amsterdam, it seems. I, I was very surprised by that, because you would expect a town like London or Paris or so, but it seems that New York, Amsterdam and Wageningen are attracting the whole globe instead of, for instance, London is, approaching, is attracting the old Commonwealth, let's say. What's our relation with ecosystem and landscape services? The, the, uh, the, there has been a, a focus on it in a uh, program which uh, ran from 2006 to 2010, but I can assure you that research is continuing. Although we have a new government, and new govern governments, as you well know, uh, automatically imply new policies, because that's why they are new, but research in ecosystem and landscape services is expected to continue and uh, this program uh, from 2006 and 2010 were led by the, uh, the two organizers of this conference, Dolph de Groot and Leon Braat. And it was funded on the thing which, which is called knowledge base, base in the Netherlands. The government is funding uh, research and uh, part of that is very much focused on policy support, so to speak. And on the other hand, the notion is, and uh, a very important notion is, that it is important to maintain the knowledge base, also for things which are not absolutely relevant today, but which may be and will be probably relevant tomorrow. Funded by the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Innovation and Agriculture. And during, in the course of that time, uh, 30 million Euro, euros went into this. I give you a few examples. One is uh, fine dust is uh, popular everywhere, also in the Netherlands, and uh, the role of vegetation in dealing with uh, fine dust is one of the issues addressed. There is uh, an area called Langheet in the east of the country where uh, a combination of water purification and biomass production is uh, taking on, taken on board. And here we have the example of the Hoekse Waard where in the west of the country, where uh, national pest control is part of the common way uh, uh, farmers and uh, horticulturists are working. And Hoekseward, by as a matter of fact, is famous. I don't know if you know that it is famous, and if you don't know, 
It's not as famous as I thought, but it is in particular famous since uh, Al Gore, The Common Future, because as you may know in Al Gore's film, the Netherlands, half of it disappears, and the West completely disappears, with the exception, surprisingly enough, of the Hoekse Waard, which is far, most far below sea level of what we, we have at all. That was one of the only tiny areas in that film. Planning tools, very important of course to make it practical to do something with it and most important perhaps and certainly in the current atmosphere of still continuing economic crisis, the funding of things is very important and there has been developed an economic tool to evaluate for example the National Ecological Network which is designed in the Netherlands to connect different patches so to speak and uh, as it seems the results showed that it was more beneficial, that it results for more money than was put into it. Well, you have a conference here, ecosystem services, uh, integrating science and practice. As I said, I think that's a very good combination. And uh, you are in a huge turnout, and we are very thankful for that, that you come to us with so many people. And also, I'm quite happy as a re responsible for education that you also have a course and that you have uh, something like 25 participants uh, staying here until Sunday to get acquainted with this field of ecosystem services. Having said that, I wish you a very enjoyable and a very prolific conference and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.